Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, we don't have a guest today, but why don't you tell the audience what we're going to be talking about? Yeah, so in a lot of the episodes we've done of late, webinars we've done of late, we've been talking about a little bit in the way of the future of email, and um, there's a lot going on. Safe to say, there's quite a lot going on. There's Chat GPT, which everybody and their dog is talking about. Can't blame them. Um, it's a really big change and it, it can affect so many different things. There's not just AI though, there's a bunch of different things. There's dynamics within how emails are being sent. Um, emails also kind of not very new. Um, there's not that many new tactics per se going on. So um, I thought it'd be nice to sit down and just say, we're halfway through 2023 as we sit and talk here today. Um, what's the future hold and any sort of guesses and concerns uh things we're looking forward to that type of thing so uh but at the risk of you repeating what you said before the um the sort of ai side of things i imagine it's going to be something we talk about quite a bit here yeah i mean i I, I, if you want to go that route right away the one thing i will say that i think will come up is i think there will be more compliance to be honest i think um with all these rivals chat gpt all the rivals i think there's going to be softwares platforms companies that are going to look to um, figure out who's actually using those platforms to send those emails and put those automatically into a spam promotions or marketing folder. I just think that at the end of the day, um, there's going to be a lot of players in the game. I think ChatGPT is just one. And I think a lot of people are building so many things similar. So I think there's going to be compliance. Like there was Castle, there was Can Spam, there still is GDPR. All the ones there still is. I think there's going to be something that's built around using automated email in your sequences. So that's one thing. Um, I think the good thing that might come out of this with AI and everything, I think data might become cleaner. Um, I think emails uh, will become cleaner. I think there'll be um, less bounces, which is a good thing. But I do think that it's not going to, I think it's going to take away the personalization. Um, And that's one thing that I know we talk about all the time, Ollie, is, you know, you got to be replying to personalized email I think that's the one thing that it might take away. And there might be some some mistakes within all the different new technologies that are out there um, for email. So that's where I think it's going. Um, I think it's still at the infancy. I think we're just at the beginning. I think AI is nowhere close to what it's going to be. I think we're at least five years away from seeing something that will be really, really um, good in email. But um, it's, uh, it's definitely interesting times, man. I could see it being quicker than five years by by some distance, but um, a big thing I'm struggling to get my head around is that, for instance, if you've heard of Gated, well, there's a, there's a couple of other ones like this, but it's so, somewhat of an inbox protection, I guess you could call it, like safeguarding type thing. It blocks out like unwanted quote unquote emails. I think the problem with those things, great as the concept and the idea is, I haven't used it, but we're seeing it a little bit more and more, is that. Let's say I'm a partnerships person and I want to partner with you, Sean, and it's a mutually beneficial thing. Obviously, software sales people say it's a mutual benefit, but you know what I'm saying? There's a difference. That That is going to get blocked from those types of things. So I think there's an interesting bit there where how can you slash I don't think you can, at least accurately forever, differentiate from what is a genuine reach out for a good reason rather than to block the stuff we don't want to see. Yeah. So there's that's a, a bit of a problem. I can't really see how it gets solved with this. So then what happens because of that? And also, you know, you mentioned obviously Chat GPT. We've heard in the news that um people have been using it to write their essays, their you know, oh, yeah. things for school. And there's already ways of detecting something has written this on behalf of the person. I wonder if at some point it will be the same for my inbox. So for instance, was this written from an Outlook or a Gmail direct? Yep. Was this written from an API? And and which APIs and which services are deemed acceptable? Who knows? Because that could mean, um, like, if you're a spam caller, obviously there's protections against that, so you're not going to get allowed to. But at what volume and what platforms are allowed? Who knows? So at that point, I think it gets a bit, it, it, it gets a bit weary, and, and that also is a big question for: should we not allow uh, platforms that particular, you know, like auto auto close, obviously. Um, I think that is certainly a place for that. It would be wrong, I think, to turn off, not just because we (laughs) have that tool, but it would be wrong to say, no, you can't do anything at any scale because literally what AI is, is infinite scale of everything. 
So that would be ridiculous. And that doesn't yeah. make any sense. That would slow everybody right down. So I'm a little confused about where that lands. But certainly um, the personalization, like you said, is uh, is a little bit of a worry, I think. Hopefully, people who are in sales at least use these types of things to plan their attack yeah. optimally. That'll be the thing, not so much to write what happens in the battle, as it were, to use like a war analogy. But yeah, it's... It's an interesting one. I think it's going to be a lot quicker than you said, though. I, I feel like maybe end of next year, people will be approaching how they do emails totally differently. And I, I think that'll matter. keep changing, but I don't think we'll see the real, the all the real stuff within AI that you can do at your disposal within mm. three to five years. But I mean, I still think I think there's going to be stuff where you know with emails, it won't be your content that you're writing. I think there'll be signals and times that you actually know to email those prospects at that exact time. So you know that between somehow between 12 and one every day, they're taking their lunch and that's when they read their, that's their hour that they read their emails. So I think there'll be some, some intelligence there. Um, so it won't only be on the content side, but it'll be like timing. Cause you know, there's certain times of the day where if I have a 15 minute break, that's when I go through my emails and I start replying to all my emails at the same time. If you can find as a prospect where that, or as a, a salesperson, where that 15 minute is and put that email in their inbox right there. You might get a reply right away and they might actually read it. Um, I think stuff like that, you know, we we currently track stuff like that in articles, but I think there'll be so much more stuff on the back end, you know, looking at millions and millions and millions of different emails and the times and everything. Um, so I think there will be, it's, it's going to be interesting times. I think the next three years is going to be very interesting. You know what would be cool? So let's so say, the AI, like you just described, is able to say, you know what, Sean looks at his email at this point because of whatever ways of finding that out there is. So it knows when I send you something, it's at that time you receive it. But if on your side, there was one which said, you know what, that like message, no matter what the timing, doesn't really look like his type of thing that he clicks on and then it doesn't serve you. It's almost like picking your inbox for you. That would be quite cool because I think that's the problem. It's not, I receive too much emails. It's, I receive too much irrelevant and junk yeah. emails. Maybe that's part of it because the amount of times I can't even tell you. The new thing I'm getting like every single 10 minutes is um, podcast creative services. Our producer Daniel is here. We love you, Daniel. And uh, we don't need any help with our podcast. Thanks. But uh, I get that all the time or appointment setting or oh, yeah. insurance and you name it. Like it's all the time. Lead generation, customer list, blah, blah, blah. Like, if I could filter that out, you can manually, but if I can never see that again, fine. My inbox is absolutely fine with that. So, yeah. And I know, uh, you know, I, we are in house, but I know there's a lot of companies really. It's funny because AI is becoming in everything. I saw last week um, my first two CSM softwares that are in, in, in putting AI in. I saw another one that's now taking stuff from Slack and posting into what your, you know, an agenda for your one-on-one -on -one meetings with your sales team and your sales reps. People are trying to do it with the sales, with the content. I don't think it's there yet, but I think within the next year, like you said, I think you'll start seeing the AI in there, but AI and all that stuff. It's like, it's a, it's, um, it's like building a condo from the bottom up. It takes time. So you put the, you know, the windows, the doors, the infrastructure, everything on there. So I think you'll start seeing stuff in the year, but you won't see like, the oh my god wow for at least three years but um i do think it's going to be people are going to have to change the way they do things but i think it'll be good in a way but i think it it'll be interesting to see if it takes away that personalization that real um stuff because one thing i mentioned I, we, I think we talked about this on the webinar is i can if i got an email from you ollie and i read the email i'm like oh this is ollie he's being very funny in the email and then I go on a call with you and I'm like, well, this guy's not funny. There's no way he wrote that email I received yesterday. I'm really That's going off of you, problem. just saying, really not a fan of you anymore. <laughs> but no, but I mean, I'm just saying it could be the other way around. It's like he's a very serious email and then you get on the phone with Sean or Ollie and they're just joking around. Yeah. I think that's where it's going to be like, well, you never wrote that email. I'm one of those guys that I can tell if somebody, if a text message, if an email, if somebody was written by somebody else, and if I know that person. So I think that's where it's going to start to get a little scary where it's like, okay, not only is this a cold email, I know you did not write this. Yeah. And that's the the interesting bit. One of the first AI things that, well, of the new scary ilk of them 
is that I saw a Joe Rogan podcast, which was a complete AI fake, like a deep fake, and you couldn't tell. Um, so that that's the part where because there's so much of his content, you, there's so much of like a sample, it can replicate it so well. If you give it like two lines, it's obviously going to be nothing like you. But if it can read everything that you ever wrote, I think it could sound a lot like you. And um, there's probably a little small margin of difference. Like when we we do a webinar, I kind of up the, I take some jokes at you for a bit of fun, you know, to bring the atmosphere up a little bit more than usual because that's part of it. There's like a small yeah. difference. But that that could, I don't see that being a problem. But I, I agree if it ever was, I could tell immediately, just like you can. You, sometimes you get on the phone and someone is very formal and it's very business-like, ultra business-like, corporate-y, but then exactly. they don't speak like that at all. And already your distrust, like in your head, is firing, and you know this. I, I already feel bad about this experience. I'm not like inclined to, yeah, be you know giving and that type of thing. So it's got to sound like you. But um, yeah, I've I've got a bit of an idea that I want to share with you and the, and the listeners. See what you think. Not just about AI, but probably when it will, um, when that sort of extra degree of automation kicks in, whenever that is. I could see like a bit of a turn back. Every, everything is cyclical and we always have at the moment, everyone wants to write brief emails. They always say maybe 75 words and subject yeah. line is like three, four words, something like that. Get it. I like the tactic. Everything becomes such an echo chamber in this world and everybody copies everybody else. At some point it becomes like old stuff becomes retro and now it's cool. So I, I think in the near future, pretty soon, the, the idea is going to flip. It's going to be longer emails. Really? And I'm, I'm pretty happy for that change because everything I get is so the same, which is the same for everybody. But at a certain point, I think there's just when you write more, you have more opportunity. Obviously, that's the nature of it. You can just drop a few more things in which allow you to be extra impressive or extra crap if you're going to do it badly. And that's that's a skill gap in salespeople. Anyone can write a brief email. They can use a tool to help them do it. But if I'm going to use a bit of personality in sort of the art, of sales rather than the sciencey side of it only i can do that if i've got it and if i don't i'm not going to get that out there on that piece of paper or that that email so i'm kind of looking forward to that there's going to be an opportunity for me to say in my in my first line hey sean just like when oron belilty beat you in that tennis match i bet you'd love to beat your competitors <laughs> winky emoji because it looks like i wrote it not a crappy robot and then yeah. i go on to have a Something that you said in that recent press release we, that we got you in about the acquisition of Autoclose, a quote mark. I have done research to find that. And then I have another paragraph where I reference the size of your sales team and then about a value prop that I have. And another little signature flourish thing at the end where I reference a different thing. And it might be like where you're from, Toronto, they're the worst team in the MLS. I know you don't really care about soccer, but another little personal reference. That stuff is just, it doesn't even fly in today's yeah. sort of land of email it's it's too like no that's way too much you, you're drowning them it's an essay but i'm quite looking forward to if i receive that now that would be shocking to me i would be amazed well i guess i'm going to send you a, bit, a long email today ollie just to make you uh your uh um your make upcoming future yeah your friday exactly you're trying to uh, give me a list of demands for what you want next week is it <laughs> I do want to bring up one more thing, and I, I mean, I don't. We've, we've talked about this as, as well. Is video? Um, I feel like three years ago, not even. I would say 2017, six years ago, I was like, video is going to be the next big thing. Video is the next big thing. But still, today in my inbox, I don't even get one video a day. Me too. An email, and every year I say it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Do you think? we're done with that or do you think we're still it's coming it's coming it's coming next year next year you know it's one of those i really like doing video it's an extra piece of effort which i don't yeah. think you always get the benefit of too, yeah. because people sort of don't care if they still didn't care anyway it's yeah. a bit like um you know those companies where you can send somebody a gift and if you send me the first gift i've ever gotten i'm happy for it if you send me the 65th mug with my name on it or a company's logo eh, you know, giving it the, away. the novelty's gone, isn't it? You know, like I don't get very many videos and I seldom do click on them when I do get them. Just and you probably don't get many gifts either. I, I don't know. I got a bottle of Rakia from the team when they met up a couple of weeks ago and I got a nice hoodie, but that's from our own company. They're not even trying to pitch me. So yeah, I, I really like video and I'm I'm not sure why it hasn't really caught fire. I think it's just, it's like too 
different it's too much of a weird medium it's yeah. almost like when you talk about video what you're really talking about is using a video in an email yeah most of the time you can do it in social media but yep. that is it's like it's stuck on that one channel which um again even if you had let's say if i just sent you a video and it wasn't doable in a, in an email if it just somehow landed in your slack or something would, would you watch that still probably no i, I don't know yep. it's Maybe it's in like bigger sales or it's a bit more down the funnel, less for opening up new conversations maybe. But I, uh, yeah, I think it's changing a little bit. I'm not sure. I thought it would become this like, huge thing and Me too. so much talk about it. But, but as you said, it's not sort of caught light. Perfect. Well, this is, uh, we're getting up to the end of this episode. So I want to uh, thank everyone for joining us today. This has been an absolute blast. And thank you for everybody listening wherever you are in the world. If you did enjoy today's show on email, um, please don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from and subscribe so you don't miss the next show, the, the next guest. Once again, Ollie, thank you so much.